Hi, I'm going to show off some stuff in this video that showed up from eBay this week. Uh, the first thing I'm going to show will be this VCO module. It's a VCO module that goes from 70 to uh, 200 megahertz. I'll be putting that on the scope. Then I will show off this used RF attenuator from uh, 0 to 10 decibels. And then uh, I'm not going to go into details with these, but, but these things uh, also came a crimping tool for crimping uh, BNC connectors, a bag of SMA cables, and some, uh, some BNC connectors. So if we take these out, see that these have inside of them is a uh, a little pin and a little uh, crimp sleeve you strip your wire you solder it to the pin then you put the pin in you push the braid for the wire over then you put the sleeve on then you put it in your crimp tool and uh, crimp it down. So this crimp tool is uh, like a super cheap one. It was only like 20 bucks. Uh, it did work sufficiently for me to make this uh, SMA to BNC cable. Seems mechanically solid. I added some uh, heat shrink over the top of the crimp. Um, probably can't see it in the video, but the jaws, they this cheap tool, they got a little bit of play in them back and forth, uh, but not bad. So, what I used was the size marked uh, .128 to crimp that BNC connector on. That's that's that uh, circle there. Um, okay, on to trying out some things with the oscilloscope. Hi, if you've been watching my recent videos, you'll see that one of my newer hobbies is doing some radio frequency stuff, and I've recently. Uh, built my own uh, RF generator and in the, the process of learning on that I noticed on eBay that you can buy these uh, VCO modules from China for a relatively cheap price that seem to have a very similar circuit to the uh, the one that I built out of the uh, the magazine article so I figured I'd get one of these modules for China it's only 25 bucks try it out and compare it and see how clean of a signal I get so this is the module that, uh, that that came from eBay. You can see it's got one uh, dip package here. You can be almost certain that's an MC1648 VCO chip, just like uh, just like the other RF generator that I built. Um, whoever made this has scraped the uh, the part number off. I, seems kind of silly they did that because there's there's only so many chips that it could be, and uh, it's it's rather obvious circuit at least on this half over more or less straight out of the data sheet so you've got the MC1648 you've got uh, four Veractor diodes these are they're, they're marked 910 on them so I'm assuming they're uh, BB910 Veractor diodes uh, those those seem quite plentiful supply on eBay as well uh, you've got a you've got an inductor here which again is, is straight out of any circuit that you'd build with one of these uh, MC1648 chips. Then there's a, uh, a resistor which goes to a pin which goes to the potentiometer that lets you um, input the voltage that you will use to uh, control the frequency. Down here we have what looks like a 5 volt regulator. Um, there's some transistor driver stuff on the output here. I'm not really going to uh, try to try to figure out what that is is so just some kind of two transistor driver um, there's a four pin header over here the two middle pins at ground the top pin is uh, is the uh, voltage for the uh, for controlling the frequency and the bottom pin is uh, 12 volts and then there's uh, there's an SMA jack on the side and uh, I just I just hooked this up let's see what it does so uh, panning across the workbench, you can see I've got a 12 volt power supply. It's currently uh, pulling uh, 60 milliamps to the uh, the little module. Then I have a potentiometer. I've just hooked that up from 12 volt to ground, and then uh, this green lead going out and giving the uh, the signal to the uh, the RF board. There's the RF board, and over here 
is my uh, frequency counter and oscilloscope. Uh, just, just some info on how I cabled this up. I do have a 50 ohm uh, inline terminator there. I've got a T fitting here supplying the signal to the uh, frequency counter and the signal coming out through some RG316 cable and into the, uh, the RF board. So I've zoomed in on the, uh, the frequency counter and oscilloscope so we can see how this performs. Right now I have the potentiometer all the way up. Uh, we can see it's putting out 197.40 uh, Two um, megahertz. It, it seems pretty stable, so I sort of purposely did the the minimal amount of effort to uh, hook this thing up. I didn't add any uh, any kind of special reference voltage or any uh, any bypass capacitors in the potentiometer. I just kind of hooked the potentiometer up to the uh, the voltage input, and, and you know I'm surprised it's, it's as stable as it is. Uh, so. That's at uh, 197.4 megahertz. That's pretty much seems to where it be where it tops out on. And if we, you know, bring this down, I'm just bringing it slowly down. See that it's really pretty good throughout the range. We're around 150 megahertz now. hundred and twenty five megahertz once we get down here the signal starts to get a little bit uh, distorted you can see maybe along that edge it's starting to get a little bit weird um, there we're at hundred and ten uh, megahertz ninety nine megahertz ninety four there we're at eighty megahertz there it's kind of flat across the top and continuing on down, this is as low as it goes. This is uh, 64 megahertz. It's still pulling about uh, 60 milliamps of power. And if we ramp this up, all the way back through the range, up to 200 megahertz. Now, you know, I see the amplitude varies a little bit. I'm getting. Uh, 1.2 volts peak to peak at 197 seems to kind of top out there in the middle at 2.1 volts peak to peak then down here at the very beginning we are at about 2 volts peak to peak now this uh, oscilloscope is only a hundred megahertz oscilloscope so you know when we're operating at 200 megahertz that's well beyond the specification so um, you know may maybe the uh, the response of the uh, the oscilloscope, maybe it's attenuating the signal a little bit. I don't know if you can blame the module for that. I'm curious, you know, how sensitive it is to to stray touching it and stuff. I'm kind of moving my hand around the board. Doesn't really doesn't really seem to have a huge effect. It's it's a lot more stable than the one I built myself. What if I take and I move the potentiometer around yeah it's it's really pretty impressive for you know 25 bucks let's uh, ramp it up and try touching it there you know it's a little bit more sensitive yeah, I mean there I'm actually touching some of the pins you know and it's that's really I'm touching the uh, inductor that's really enough to Messed it up, but just you know, moving my hand around the vicinity of the board really doesn't affect it anymore. It seems pretty well immune. Hi, before uh, unplugging this thing from the oscilloscope, I figured I would uh, take a look at the FFT function and see what it looks like. So the uh, oscilloscope is currently set for 150 megahertz uh, center frequency, 50 megahertz per division, and. Uh, 10 dBV on the uh, on the vertical. Kind of hard to read. Um, we can see there's you know it, it's showing some harmonics. If we move this over here where we can get a good look at it. Let's 
go up to I've now set the uh, the frequency to about 150 megahertz so we can see this 50 megahertz per division so we got 150 there's uh, that's 200 250 so that's at 300 bringing it back we can see some of these other peaks I'm now at 100 megahertz so we can see there's 100 there's 200 there's 300 there's 400 then bringing it all the way down as far as it goes to 64 then ramping it all the way up to uh, about 200 Let's see if I can adjust the scale a little bit Oops. there now we've got a center at 300 megahertz 100 megahertz per division so this is 100 or I'm sorry that's uh, 200 300 that's four that's the 400 uh, megahertz harmonic okay so uh, yeah that, that should be everything I can show off about this particular uh, module so something else that uh, came from eBay this week is this stepped attenuator that I got used for about 30 bucks these things cost um, you know sometimes a couple three hundred dollars to buy a new one but you can find used ones on eBay my plan was to use this in my uh, RF generator project to be able to attenuate the output signal. Um, when it came from eBay, it didn't have a knob on it. I found this knob in my uh, parts box. It's just a standard Jameco Electronics knob with a with a set screw. Uh, the thing has a couple of uh, SMA connectors on it. It is a uh, Model 50R-019 from JFW Industries. It's kind of kind of a stiff thing to turn. Uh, usually, I'd use a small knob, but the uh, the small knobs are uh, kind of hard to turn with my hand. As as stiff as the thing is, I think it's I think that's actually how it's supposed to be. It's got uh, four mounting screws. Uh, let's try it out and see what happens. So I've taken the attenuator and I've hooked it up to the uh, the the RF module that I got and I demoed in the first part of the video she used an SMA cable going in and the SMA to BNC cable going out and uh, let's try it out in the scope and see what happens so there it is with uh, no attenuation and there is uh, one decibel two decibels three four five six seven eight nine and 10. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. Seems like a pretty good deal. I'll have to see if I can fit it in my RF generator project. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sandrail stuff. Bye.